welcome back everyone so today we are going to be creating an abstract twisted geo kind of look inside of maya and uh, we are going to be doing this method completely procedurally without the use of anything else without any third party texture or whatever completely inside of maya and uh, in a non-destructive workflow so let's quickly get into it so i'm going to start off by taking a simple torus and uh, i have a default hdr setup and a simple camera so i'm going to get into my camera and i'm going to rotate this towards this face towards the facing camera and uh, let's go to the poly torus and let's increase the overall radius here it's a bit too much and i think this looks pretty good apart from this i'm going to add some more divisions here maybe like a hundred and a hundred since this is a simple abstract art the topology or the amount of subdivision is not exactly an issue so the next thing is deforming the torus. I'm going to click on it, go to deform, nonlinear, and then twist. All right. So from here, if I go to attribute and start twisting this, you won't see much happening. And the reason is because the twist here, I'm going to turn off the grid here. Twist is not exactly in the right direction. So I'm going to rotate this to about 90 degrees, actually zero degrees in the X rotation. And now we have something like this. Obviously the rotation or the twist is a bit too much. So I'm going to make this zero again. And there we go. So I can go back to my camera here and I can start messing around with the twist ratio. So I think 180 degrees looks pretty good. It kind of gives us the look of eight, number eight or infinity if you want, if we can rotate this in a way. Anyway, so this looks pretty good to me. You can change anytime you go back, you can change it anyway. Anytime you want, you can add some more twistness. It's a completely procedural method. You don't have to worry about it. All right, so this looks pretty good. And let's go into the Arnold IPR and let's see what we have. All right, so as you can see, this is our overall simple scene. Um, I'm just gonna take a simple plane here, just so we have something as our backdrop. I'm gonna pause this quickly. Let's bring this back here i'm going to reduce the amount of geometry and there we go all right so we are good to go with the overall shading part so let's quickly get into the shading so i'm going to click here and add a new material let's use a sand surface and let's maybe call this just it all right so i'm going to make the weight to one and let's go to the hyper shade all right so this is where all the magic is going to happen and now we have something like this so the first thing I'm going to do is quickly add a displacement. So I'm going to go to Arnold and uh, select AI noise here. Now this will work as our displacement map. So I'm going to make the octaves to complete eight. The amount of octaves, octaves here is the overall basic details of your noise here. If you have trouble loading in this IPR here, make sure you are in the Arnold, not in the hardware. You are in the Arnold. And you have shader ball and it's, if it's still not rendering, make sure you give it a pause and a little bit of restart. It will be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna kind of increase some amplitude here just so I can make it a bit contrasting. And from here, you can play with lacunarity and distortion a bit if you want. Uh, but the one thing you'll notice is all the noise is kind of uh, in a way symmetrical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this 10. Let's go with 20. And the rest will be something like two and two. You can always come back and change the values if you don't like it. And I'm gonna attach this to the displacement shader here. All right. The next thing I'm gonna do is select this. And let's uh, not uh, do that right away. Let's see what the overall result is first. So I'm gonna go to the Arnold IPR and let's see what we have. All right, so this is what we have, a pretty catastrophic effect, not exactly what we are going for. So I'm gonna select my overall Torus here, go to the torus shape and obviously we have to tweak the overall displacement amount here because the displacement is a bit too much. So I'm going to put a value of me 0.100. Okay, so this looks pretty good. And uh, the if you'll notice that we have a pretty sharp rigid edges and the reason is because we don't have enough subdivision in our geometry. So I'm going to add some subdivision with a procedural method that is using the cataclock method. I'm going to keep the cataclock to two for now, but in the rendering, we can switch it up to somewhere around three or four. All right. So this is what we have. Not exactly that good looking, but what we can do here is simply go to the overall displacement here. And in the noise, what we can do is we can tell our noise, the coordination space should not be object, but the world. All right. And you can see the overall difference. 
or you can simply switch it to the UVs of the object and by this way you'll have something like this which is pretty interesting. So this is looking quite good and I'm going to go back here and I'm just going to raise the overall displacement here to something like maybe a 2 or oh, this looks pretty good. Uh, maybe like 0.150 should be a good value for this. Alright, so once you're done with this, let's close this, go to the hypershear again and uh, I'm going to use the same noise that we have for our color channel as well. So I'm going to select my noise, control C and I'm going to hit control V. So this is our pasted noise. I'm going to call this color noise. Alright, so there we go. And if I attach this completely to the base color, what we'll have is something like this, a black and white color, which is not exactly that good looking. So I'm going to attach a simple ramp here to change the overall color here. So let's, now this won't attach, so open this up, attach the R to the input and out color to the base color. All right, so there we go. Now you won't see much of uh, this happening. I'm gonna hit it back to the custom and let's change the color to something like maybe something a bit more flat color looking. Just something like maybe a blue. And this is looking quite good. I'm going to add some more variations here. All right. So this looks amazing. I'm going to go back and let's see what we have. All right. So there you go. So now you have a perfect procedural method of this amazing design with the procedural color. And you can actually see the overall pose and everything with the same amount of color. Now one thing if you don't like the overall softness of the noise what you can do is you can also go back and change the noise scale to something like maybe a 5 and 5 and you can do the same make sure to do the same with the color noise as well if you want the colors to be in the exact pose where the noise and the displacement are so now if you go back and check this out now we have much amount of that noise going on i think it's a bit too much so i'm gonna Go back to my hyper shade and I'm just going to put two value here. Apart from that, uh, the overall scale of this, I'm going to add 30 here. I think we can stretch it on the X direction. 30, let's play 30 and go to render, update full scene. And one more thing I think uh, I want to do is, uh, let's see. 30 and 30 is perfectly. I think I'm going to add 1.5 distortion and 1.5 to this as well. And I think that is good to go. If you want to make this shade a bit more interesting, this looks pretty good. If you want to add more colors to this, or maybe if you want to remove some colors, all you have to do is go to the RGB, click on this and the color will be removed. If you want to add more colors here, all you have to do is click on this and you'll add a marker. With the marker, you can pretty much add some new colors to this All right so there you go and now we have something like this so if you want to make this shade a bit more interesting you can add some more subsurface scattering or just add a bit of a coat here i'm gonna add sort of 0.5 and let's add a roughness of maybe like 0.2 let's hit play and now you have this kind of so you'll get this kind of a slimy look which is exactly what you want for this kind of look this is a pretty organic looking structure so this is what you should have and one more thing i couldn't actually find a way to get rid of this um, line where the uvs are kind of connecting um, but i hope someone will do uh, if i do find out i will let you know how to fix this and for the time being i don't have a solution for this but i will figure it out eventually all right so i'm gonna for the last thing i'm gonna do is add a simple bg color Alright, so there we go. So this was the overall procedural method of creating an abstract twisted geometric look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This was really fun creating a pretty amazing look. You can pretty much play around with anything you want in this structure. You can add more twist bounds to it. Let's take maybe a 500 and just try to play how it looks overall. You can add some more subdivisions to this. And uh, if you want, you can reduce the section radius as well to something like a bit more something like this so have fun with this play around with this and i'll see you in the next video